in your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know that phrase from that commercial on TV um, that is about a uh, bank card, I believe. What's in your wallet? Well, my wallet has so many things that sometimes I can't even snap it closed. I've got a zillion bank cards, more than anyone should have, perhaps more than I can even manage. Definitely, I don't use most of them. You know, you go into those um, stores or you go into the bank or you get it on the, um, uh, the, you know, the internet, you know, you will take 20% off if you, you know, just, you know, get the card. And I've done that. I've got the bad cards. I have got the store cards. I've got the gift cards. Some of them, I'm sure, have long been spent, but they're still in my wallet. I've got the license, the registration form. I've got the many, many, many little notes to self so that I remember things. And I've got the cash. Because unlike Father Christopher, I still carry cash. <laughs> I am one of those people that feel that at some point, I'm going to need real money. It may be that my car has you know, a tire punctures on the side of the road. I need to pull out something and give that kind person who is going to help me along. So I've got cash and they're lined up by denomination and the ones that might be worth more, I fold and put in the bank because sometimes when I rush, I may accidentally give the $50 bill when I meant to give the $10 bill. So I have all this system and all the things in my wallet tells a story about the world I live in. It tells how I depend on the systems of the world. I depend on banks, I depend on the government, I depend on so many people that I need to carry this wallet. If I leave home without it, I have to turn back. I must turn back or I fret the whole time until it's with me. In the story we hear today, a question is being asked that's similar to what's in your wallet. Let's think about what's happening as Jesus teaches um, the, or answers the question that the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians put before him. We're very, very familiar with this story, I believe. It, according to Matthew, Jesus, you know, it's that same week where Jesus enters Jerusalem. Triumphant entry. And soon after that, he finds himself in the temple and he overthrows the money changers' tables. And he begins to set up this conflict that has been brewing this conflict between the temple authorities and his disciples and of course the ways in which he pushes against the status quo and we've heard in the last few weeks the parables the parables that answer in many ways whose authority do you say and do these things. And today we hear the story of how the Herodians who support Herod and therefore supports the Roman government in their own way and the Pharisees who are the religious leaders, we hear how they team up because they need to suppress Jesus' activities. And they want to trap him. And they ask that really great question. It's a really good question. Should we pay our taxes or not? If he says, yes, pay your taxes, 
the people who have been following Jesus are going to be upset because those taxes support the Roman government that have been oppressing them for years. If he says no, then he's going to upset the Roman government. He's actually going to commit treason. But instead of answering that question, Jesus says something that we often repeat in, for many different reasons. Give to the emperor, or give to Caesar, the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God. But I would say Jesus is not telling us that we have to separate our lives into the things of the world and the things that are spiritual. Because that's impossible. That's not what God calls us to do or to be. What Jesus might be saying is, what's in your wallet? In other words, who has your loyalty? When you move into the world and are pulled by the things of the world, do you still remember who you belong to? Do you still remember that you have been stamped in the image of God? Do you remember, as we heard in the reading from Isaiah, that everything belongs to God? It's a question, what is in your heart more than what is in your wallet? What draws you, what moves you in the world? It might be, how then do you act? How then do you respond when you need to use the things that are in your wallet? How then do you respond when you're pulled by the world telling you to do things in a certain way? By your job, by your desires, by your family. How do you respond? How do you balance? that God and Emperor pull. It is, says Jesus, says the scriptures as we have heard it, it is by remembering who you belong to. <coughs> we belong to God. Isaiah says his name is imprinted on us. We have his surname. God is the one who gets the loyalty that we have and that moves us, that motivates us in the ways that we act in the world. So what's in your heart? What's in each of our hearts? And how do we live the way that this God has shown us through his son? How do we do the things of God in the world despite the emperor and all the other things that pull us apart. Like the Pharisees who had the denarius to show Jesus. The denarius that was not allowed in the temple because it carried the image of the emperor. It carried the words that suggested idolatry, that their loyalty must be given fully to the emperor. Those Pharisees now need to go away and think, how do we balance this in the same way that we leave this place each and every time we come to worship to be fed and filled and inspired? We leave and we go out into the world and we remember in all that we do that we are created in the image of God and we belong to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.